Dok, may bagong um, kasabihan ngayon na malayo pa ang pupuntahan pero malayo na ang narating. Welcome to Adulting with Joyce Spring. Watch the full video of this episode on my channel, www.youtube.com slash TV. And if you want to level up your adulting game, check out joyspring.com slash collections for my digital products and courses. And I feel like that applies to me. I feel like you naman oh. on the other hand is in that area of your life where you're already inspiring and mentoring a lot of people. But I want to go back a little bit to the beginning of your story and how you started Bello Medical Group, how this dream came about. Did you always dream of becoming a doctor and creating a brand for yourself at this scale? No, I never thought about it. I'm really one of these people who does, you know, by the seat of my pants. Basically, mm-hmm. I became a doctor only because I had so many problems with my skin and I was fat and, you know, I had so many pimples I wanted. And I was going to so many dermatologists and I couldn't, um, they couldn't fix my skin. It was just so oily with large pores. And alam mo yung what they call uh, pimples na tinubuan ng mukha. That was me. And then I was teaching aerobics. Um, I was working out three hours a day, but I couldn't control my weight. So I, you know, I really didn't know what to do anymore. I couldn't eat any less. I couldn't work out anymore. But I think that was my limit already. And I was so frustrated for about being fat. So I figured other people had problems just like me. I couldn't, couldn't be the only person in the world with these problems. So I set off finding the cure for two things, really. Just having clearer skin and a way to get slimmer and stay not fat. I don't think I'll ever be thin, thin, but at least I didn't want to be fat. And, um, you know, luckily for me, I was I came in at exactly the, the right time when dermatology was shifting from a clinical specialty where you only go to a derma if you have pimples, if you have psoriasis, if you have lupus or or uh, atopic dermatitis to a surgical specialty because it makes it a lot more uh, active. I want to do things. I love doing lasers. I love doing lipo. Yon. But I really started with only a 40 square meter clinic. And just to show you how I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. I didn't think I was going to be successful. I remember my parents giving me a 150 square meter clinic and I begged them to just give me a 20 square meter clinic and they couldn't understand. They go, why would you want something so small? But even then I knew appearances were important. I said, because if I have a 20 square meter clinic, if I have one patient, it looks so full. (laughs) <laughs> but if I have a 150 square meter clinic, one patient, I'll look such, like such a failure. Smart. So we, we agreed that they gave me a 40 square meter clinic. And before I knew it, with God's grace, I was renting the whole floor, renting the rooms to the right, to the left, then the whole floor enough finally. So, you know, it, it's very hard to start a, a practice, but I never had a hard time. From the day I opened, I don't think I, there was ever a time when... I was I was losing money or I was worried I wouldn't make it because um, with a lot of prayer, <laughs> but mm-hmm. in the two weeks I was already puno with patients, so that's wow. very rare to happen now. Diba? They keep asking me, I don't know how to start a clinic. People want me to mentor them. I said I wouldn't know. I just, you know, my partner is God, and it just happened. But <laughs> I can't teach you because I don't know how it happened. It just happened. Well, you know, Doc, I I really think that. You know, having seen you up close and known you personally, having that kind of privilege, I see that you're the kind of person, Kase, that always tries to look at the positive in every situation. You know, you try to look for good that can come out of a situation. You try to be positive in like whatever circumstance that that you're in. And then you try to be thankful for whatever works out. And so I think that kind of environment just opens up opportunity and success. Kasi diba, when you're constantly saying, ah, hindi to mag work out, or ito na lang yun, hindi ko na kaya, that's where you're gonna stay. That what, what your mind is, that's who you become. Um, but how do you do that at such a young age? Because you were 30 when you started this, if I'm not mistaken. And, yes, um, I was 30. <laughs> yeah, and then um, you scaled it. How did that all begin? So I think because I had so many problems from the very beginning, I really learned to switch my mind. 
I always say in my talks, if they give you lemonade, I mean lemons, make lemonade, Deva. Right? I don't, you know, I really know there's no perfect life. Everybody has to go through struggles. So, you know, I think unhappiness stems from not accepting what is. But you have to look at what is, and then you just have to figure out how to make it positive. So that's what I do. I always try to figure out, and I always, always stop and ask God. I'm in con- constant conversation with God. I think because I'm an only child. I grew up an only child. But my friend talaga is Jesus, God, you know, and so I'm always talking to them, to, to, to him and them. So I'd always ask, what do you want me to learn from this? Why is this happening to me? What is the lesson I have to know. And I always warn people, if you don't learn your lesson early, the lesson keeps coming back in a bigger scale. So in the beginning, God will throw you a pebble. You listen, ah, because the next it will be a rock, then a boulder, (laughs) then a building. And that's what happened, I think, with Hayden and I. We weren't listening. So we became a building at at the end. But, you know, I really do things not because of money, That's not my main driving force. I do things because it fulfills me. It helps other people. And, you know, I think because my goals, my purposes are bigger than just money. But the money just comes in. That's why, you know, when people tell me, I want to be like you. I want to be a rock star doctor so I can make lots of money. I'm like, ah, it's not going to (laughs) happen. You really have to want to help people. And of course, if you do, a lot of people will come your way and seek your help. I I remember reading an entrepreneur talk about that. And he said that, you know, if you don't have a bigger purpose for the business that you're building and the only purpose that you have is to make money and be famous, it's never going to work. Or it will work only for a short amount of time and then it will fail. Because any good business is value adding to people. It's not just value Mm -hmm. adding to you as the owner, but to people. And I think from the very beginning, that was the vision that you had for Bello to help people to add value to their lives, to make a world that is more beautiful. I remember asking you this question when I was very young, when I met you and you said, you know, I just wanted to make this world a more beautiful place for a lot of people who didn't feel like they could be beautiful. So I made them bellow beautiful. That's it for this episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. If you liked this podcast, please don't forget to use the hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring and also check out www.joyspring.com for the show notes and tag me on social media with you know it at Joy Spring. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Paalam.